In 2015, I started working on an Angular project, which actually taught me a lot. But that project did not make it to production, even after me working on it for two years, having four different versions. And that was a mistake from the product owner. But I had to face the consequences because after two years of working hard on a project, I did not have anything to show as my portfolio. But let's forget about the mistakes that product owners do and rather talk about the mistakes that Angular developers do. Hey everyone, my name is Mohammed Esanayas. I'm a Google Acknowledge expert in Angular, also known as a GDE in angular and i'm also the author of three worldwide published books including this new book that i've published called mastering angular signals i'm also someone who runs this youtube channel to make you a more informed and efficient angular developer as well now trust me when i say this i've reviewed countless angular applications and have worked on a lot of angular applications myself and i see the same performance killing mistakes by angular developers over and over again so let me ask you is your app feeling sluggish is your state management a tangled mess of subscriptions and streams in that case you are not alone today we are breaking down five major mistakes that are holding your applications back and i'll also show how you can fix those with a modern signal based approach and i want you to stick around because mistake number five is the one that defines your future as an angular developer all right so mistake number one change detection everything mindset for years we have been relying on zone.js to magically figure it out when to re-render for example you click a button data arrives from an api call and zone.js tells angular to check well everything but let's look at this particular diagram this is the zone.js world an event fires in a tiny component and zone.js tells angular to check basically everything in the component tree and this is super inefficient it's like alarming the whole city just because of one piece of burnt toast now let's look at the world of angular signals an add to cart button is clicked in this case a signal gets updated in a particular service and because the header components template is the only one that uses this signal it is the only one that gets checked and the footer component well it gets skipped alongside other components which are not really using this particular signal and this precision is what unlocks the future of angular performance signals tell angular exactly what needs to be checked which means no zone just overhead smaller bundle sizes and a faster and more predictable framework and let me tell you that this is not just a dream this is the direction angular is heading and to be honest neglecting is not just a mistake now it's going to be choosing to left behind well next up mistake number two and that is using complex state management for simple state changes and i see this all the time if you need to share something simple across different components using a service well the old way is just to use a behavior subject which means in general you just create a particular service create a private variable in there which is a behavior subject which holds the value as well then you create a public variable which is read only and you use as observable and then a component and basically uses this particular observable using the async pipe. Now, whenever the theme needs to change, it needs to call this particular function of the service, which uses the next function, which updates the behavior subject, in turn updates this read-only variable, which in turn goes through the async pipe and then updates the template or the UI. In general, it works, but you are mixing reactive paradigms to just read and update a simple value. Now contrast that with the signal-based approach here. In this case, in your service, you basically create a new signal and that's it the signal basically holds the value itself when it comes to reading your components can directly use the signal using this function notation and that means that there's no async pipe required so you required less from the angular core framework and as a result the code is much simpler more readable and plugs directly into the angular's reactivity system and a disclaimer that this is a core concept in the book that i mentioned and that brings us to mistake number three which is tangled logic for a simple derived state for example if you needed to have a full name based on two different observables which you might already have in your services you would have to use something called combine latest to basically look into if any of these dependencies change which means first name changes or last name changes the full name observable is updated but in this case also the template needs to work with the async pipe to work with this observable or to re-render when the value updates and while it works you are creating this complex stream just to concatenate two strings and when it comes to the code
code for this, it's really complex, hard to read, and also can lead to redundant computations if you're not really caching it or memoizing it using something like Share Replay, for example. Now, a more modern and elegant solution is Angular Signals. And using Angular Signals, you can actually use Computed, which basically looks at other signals. And if any of the dependent signals do change, the Computed gets called, and then the template basically gets the new value. Now, the beauty here is that unless any of these change, the value in computed is cached, which means that the computed function will not recalculate the values unless and until the signals change, which means that it is cached by default. Now, this results in having an efficient, declarative, more readable code, which is efficient by design. And all of this comes out of the box from Angular. You can also look at here where we have two different signals and we have a computed function, which would only re-trigger if any of these signals change. As you can see, much nicer. Now, mistake number four is subtle, but really dangerous, and that is misplacing side effects. In general, a side effect is any interaction with the outside world. It could be logging, it could be writing to storage, or making an analytics API call. And too often, I see this logic buried inside subscribe blocks or the tap operator from RxJS. Now, let's have a look at this particular example in which we have an ngon in it, and we are using subscription right here. And inside here, we have some logic for for example, tracking analytics. Now, one of the worst things that I see and basically have to point out is having a subscribe inside another subscribe. So please avoid that. But regardless, we may have a situation here which requires unsubscribing. And as the comment says here, what's unsubscribing? Probably a problem for future me or a future developer who joins my team, of course. Instead, you could actually use something from the Signals API and that is effect. An effect basically allows us to put the side effects directly within the callback function. So everything that you need to do can be put in the effect in the sense that whenever a signal changes, the effect can re-trigger itself. For example, here we are looking at the card services item count signal. Whenever the value changes here, I want to log it to the local storage. In this particular case, whenever the signal changes, only then this effect would trigger. And I don't have to really care about subscription, unsubscription here, because I'm only triggering sort of a transactional function here. But let's say you had something in your code that actually requires cleanup. We have the on cleanup function from the effect itself, which can be called just like this. And you can use it for cleaning up. For example, if there was a set interval that ran a particular log every one second, then you could basically clear that particular interval. Similarly, if I'm writing to local storage against a particular key, I may want to just clear that key or remove that item from local storage when the component gets destroyed. And you can easily do that within the effect. And just to point it out again, the effect only runs when one of the signals used within the effect are changed and the effect automatically tracks its dependencies. Again, this is really cool for separating the concerns beautifully so you can have the side effects in one place or multiple places but within the effects. And that brings us to finally the biggest mistake of all, sticking to the old habits just because it works. And trust me, that is a trap. Signals are not just a new feature, they are the foundation of the future of Angular. When you look at angular signals, you understand that they are key to zoneless Angular applications, simpler component APIs. For example, the forms will soon have a signal-based API as well. And it affects not only the performance of Angular applications, but also brings a developer experience that we have not seen before. And at this point, I can almost guarantee you that every Angular application that you build without the signal APIs or understanding signals is accumulating a tech debt from day one. So wrapping up, we have seen how old habits lead to slow and complex code. And you have seen the common thread in the solutions we have discussed, a practical understanding of Angular signals. And again, that is exactly why I wrote this book, Mastering Angular Signals. It is my definitive hands-on guide that takes you from the absolute fundamentals that we have discussed today to real world patterns. We cover asynchronous operations, seamless migration from RxJS, robust testing strategies, and provide practical code that you can start using immediately. If you are serious about building modern and high-performing Angular applications, this book is your essential roadmap. So I want to conclude this video by saying stop fighting the framework. Grab your copy of Mastering Angular Signals today and you can find it on Amazon. You can find the link in the description of this video. And if you found this video useful, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more videos and also to help the channel grow. And as always, thanks for watching. Happy coding. I'm going to see you next time.